This is the second video in my short story Sunday review series. Boy, that's a mouthful. Um, if you don't know what this series is all about or why I am doing this, I will link you to my first video and my announcement video on this where I give a little bit more detail on why I'm reviewing these. Stay tuned and we will get into the second story in this Best American Short Story Collection as edited by Meg Walzer. Hey y'all, it's Jen and welcome to my channel, If First Inkling. Basically, I am reviewing the short stories in the Best American Short Story Collection 2017 edition as edited by Meg Walzer. And just as a pre pre preface, preface, whatever, just as a little bit of a warning, I am not a literary critic. I have no idea what the hell I'm doing here. Um, this is my first exposure really to real exposure to short stories like this. Um, and a lot of the, my first exposure to some of these authors. So this is the second one in the series. And it is Are We Not Men by T.C. Boyle. And it is from The New Yorker. This story is about 17 pages long. But basically what this is, is this is set in the future where um, genetic modification is a thing. You can modify, genetically modify children. You can modify pets, whatever. You get your choice. And supposedly this is to help a make the world and a better place. Um, it's kind of modified out all of the nasty bits that we have in society, um, like cancers and um, diseases and just qualities that we don't value as highly in people or animals. Um, and they've done some crossbreeding and stuff that you see in here. And so the story is actually told from the perspective of what is his name the husband this story is told from the perspective of the husband um i can't remember his name and i can't find it quickly in the text if i find it i'll put it over here but really basically what this boils down to is this is a hey um this husband is married to a woman connie connie wants a baby and she wants to order up her a kid at this point. Um, and then we also have the neighbor next door, who is Allison, who is a single person. And um, we are introduced to all of these characters because one of these genetically modified animals comes into the yard um, carrying the Allison's, the neighbor's, dead miniature micro pig. And this really pisses me off. Um, but Allison is introduced, she is the single neighbor next door, and she is, is introduced to us in this story by this line. Allison was one of those pet owners who anthropomorphized their animals. <sighs> Big words. Um, and that pig was the center of her unmarried and unboyfriended life. We'll come back to that. The husband in this story is really upset because now he's going to have to explain to Allison, the next door neighbor, that this dog killed her pig. And she's going to be mortified and, and extremely heartbroken because this pig is all she has going for her in her life. It is her sole companion because she's unmarried and unboyfriended. The husband is portrayed through all of this kind of meek, kind of timid, doesn't really have much of a backbone. He doesn't have those manly men qualities. Um, he doesn't like people, and it's more that he just doesn't want to be bothered with them instead of that he just doesn't really like them. Um, he's kind of a loner. He works from home some days, and he works in the office some days, and, and he just is not a very likable person either, and he doesn't really like anybody. But he, is, he has to end up confronting the owner of this dog that killed his neighbor's pig. And it's a little 14-year-old genetically modified girl. And 
she's super intelligent and she's super pretty and she's super this and super that and all of the best genetically modified qualities and he's just kind of unimpressive in his dealing with this girl and and her dog then Allison comes back into the story and this is how she's described again she was sad-faced and sweet the victim of one catastrophic relationship after another and I couldn't help feeling protective towards her a single woman alone in a big house her mother had left her when she died and so Allison is coming over and she's confronting the this um, girl who is super smart her and her IQ is 162 and she can run the hundred meters in 9.5 seconds um, and that is her dog and she loves that dog and you know everything's all about her and her dog and it doesn't really matter how Allison felt about her pig because you know this um, corporation can just replace it he, they can just make you a new one it's okay just make you a new little pig <sighs> but then we get this line and I do like this a lot um, there was a larger sadness at play here the sadness of attachment and loss and the way the world wrecks its chain wrecks its changes whether we're ready for them or not which is true it doesn't really matter what you do to try and control the world the world is going to not be controlled and bad things are going to happen no matter what no matter if you're the nice sweet little unmarried and unboyfriended little pathetic little girl next neighbor next door or not then we meet the wife Connie who is a fucking bitch <sighs> So Connie comes in, she's all pissed off, she's in this high elaborate job. She comes in and she demands this and she demands that and she slams this and she slams that. And she says, I want a baby. And I've already made the appointment so, I, so you're just going to have to agree with me. We're having a baby. When she doesn't even consult her husband on if he wants children or not. We're just having this baby. Because I want it and I'm the alpha female bitch here. And you are the lowly, beta, emasculated male. And really, she doesn't need him anyway because we get this really interesting line where it says, The sole function of sex these days was recreational. Babies were conceived in the laboratory. So really, Connie doesn't need to have husband over here to have this baby. She can have it without him. He's just got to live with it because she's already made her decision. She's made up her mind. She's made the appointment and they're having a kid because Connie wants a kid. And she's the alpha female and she's the one that runs this household. And by God, he's going to do what she wants. In fact, she, she even says, I'm 38 years old and I'm putting my foot down. I've made an appointment at Gin Lab at 10 a.m. Thursday. Either you come with me or I swear I'm going to go out and get a sperm donor. Donor hell she's made up her mind because she's this big bad alpha female bitch and he is this emasculated beta male who doesn't really have any purpose in this marriage um he gets pissed off and he's like nobody likes an ultimatum i'm gonna go over here next door because allison's out here crying over her little pig and i'm gonna boink the neighbor because I can and I'm pissed off at my wife and this is the thing we do when we're pissed off at our wives instead of dealing with the situation I'm just gonna go fuck the neighbor because she's meek and mild and timid and I can be dominant when I'm with her since I can't be dominant when I'm with my wife basically goes and fucks the neighbor to comfort her because it it was just so very natural at the time but then he comes back in and he's got these regrets because you know he loves his wife and um he didn't want to lose his wife because he loves his wife and we get this line this is this doozy i could i could smell allison on me still i could smell my own fear i didn't want to lose my wife i loved her i was used to her she was the only woman I'd known these past 12 years and more, my familiar. 
Well, honey, you should have thought about that before you boinked the neighbor next door because you were pissed off at your wife that you love and, you're, and you don't want to lose. We go on and we go through this and Roy, that's the husband's name, Roy. We think we finally get that tw 12 pages into the story. He comes home the next day and he was like, you know, instead of getting a baby, we've never even owned a pet. Why don't we get this pet? And here, look, I've brought this little cute little cat dog, puppy kitten thing. And we need to just have it for a little while and then we'll have a baby. And of course, Connie's not having any of that because she's the bitch alpha female bitch and she's made up her mind she's having a baby and because Connie rejects that she doesn't want that animal um he ends up giving it to to Allison to replace her pig so we get fast forward through this um seven and a half months later and Connie is all pregnant with her um genetically modified kid but old Allison's over there knocked up too of course Allison is all pregnant by Roy and they did it the natural way they didn't go to a laboratory to conceive they did it in the backyard um, while he was consoling her over her dead pig seven and a half months earlier and then of course I saw this coming from the get-go I mean three or four pages back we knew this was gonna happen right I mean come on but we get this lovely line from Connie about Allison of course Roy's playing dumb here because he knows he's the father of this kid he says I play dumb, of course. What else can I do? And says, maybe she went to gin lab, I say. Her? This is Connie talking. Her? You're kidding me, right? I mean, look at that string of jerks she keeps dating. If you want to know the truth, she's lower class Roy, and I'm sorry to have to say it. Connie's a bitch. Connie's a bitch. And then, at this point, Roy starts thinking, holy fucking shit, she lives next door to me, and what's going to happen when they both pop out these kids and they look, both of them, just like me? And he says, I don't have to be involved, but I was involved. Though, we'd only had sex the one time. Mm, or two, actually. And if she had a boy and he looked like me and grew up right next door playing with our daughter, how involved would that be? So, long story short, it comes along. We get to the end of this story and Connie, the wife, figures out that Allison, the neighbor, is pregnant by her husband. And, you know, shit hits the fan. But... My thoughts on this, of course, there's a whole subplot of this genetic engineering thing and the thoughts on, is this good? Is this right? Is that how we want to go on life? What is the merits of that and the, mor the morality and ethical issues that it creates there? You have that or you would have that if it didn't piss you off so much about the stereotypical characters you have here. I mean, we have the bitch alpha female who is demanding and dominating and doesn't have any soft side because she's the alpha female. Then we have the weak, meek, emasculated beta male husband who, when his alpha female bitch wife gets, gets him all riled up and he gets pissed off because she's emasculated him, um, he goes and he tries to dominate the and has an affair with the next door neighbor meek mild pathetic single girl over there who will just run into the arms of any man because who is willing to give her comfort just i have a problem with this this is problematic because yes there are women on both sides of the spectrum that have that act that way and there is a men in the middle that act that way but it is so such a surface level broad stroke stereotype that it just pisses me off because as a single woman there is nothing meek and mild and no backbone about me and I'm not going to run into the arms or bed of every man that pays me attention. 
But on the flip side, I also could be considered kind of alpha and female. And I am not a bitch. And I do have a soft side. And I am not a dominating and demanding of my partner. When you're in a marriage, you have a partner and they are equal. And it pisses me off that this is shown this way. And if you are married to it, if you are a strong, independent woman and you are married to a man who can't handle that shit, then what do they do when they can't handle you? They go off and cheat. But not all men. And even not all men who are more of the timid types. And it just pisses me off. This whole, whole character traits of these piss me off. And I'm done ranting about this. Let's just say... I didn't enjoy this one. It really pissed me off. I think I probably would rate it about a two out of five stars. Um, because I couldn't see past the character traits that were, that were making me so angry to get to the actual story. I know there's probably some good shit in there about the genetically modifying people and the ethnics of that. Um, but I couldn't see past the shit characters and I promise I probably won't cuss as much in all these other ones but this one really pissed me off and it has me all riled up would I recommend this to anybody no don't read this short story it is crap and um it is crap because it is so superficial and you don't get a lot of depth in it and you sure as hell don't get any good character development and I know that you can develop a, three characters a little bit better than that even if it is in 17 pages, it can be done. I have faith. I do plan on reading some different T.C. Boyle. I was recommended San, the novel San Miguel because I've heard great things about T.C. Boyle, but this is my first experience with him, and I don't want it to be my last. I need to have a little bit more experience with him so I can determine if he's crap or not. If you've enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. Um, if you're reading along this series with me, let me know that as well. Let me know what you thought of the story in the description below. Um, let me know what you think about this format of this. If you like how I'm reviewing these short stories, I know I'm probably going into a lot more depth than I probably should as far as telling what the story is. Um, but I don't know any other way to do it. So I'm open to suggestions down below if I need to tweak anything please please let me know in the comments below um, and as always I'm going to link Adrian's channel down below with his review of this he does a little bit better job of pulling some other stuff out of it because again like I said I was so pissed off about the characters in this that I couldn't see the story past the shit characters if you are new here and you're not already subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Next Sunday, I will be talking about the equally bad short story, God's Work, by Kevin Canty. And it will probably also be a ranty video. So if you've enjoyed me being upset and cussing and um, ranting about a short story, then you will not want to miss next week's video. And until next time, Bye.